Um, so hi, I'm Daisy, and today I'm going to be talking about mental health. Um, I just wanted to give a quick introduction about why I'm giving this talk and my goal for it. Um, I didn't want to come up here and sort of present you with stats and figures about how important mental health is and how it's affecting our society. Um, instead, I wanted to share a bit more of personal stories, um, my experiences in life, um, to help sort of create some empathy for anybody that hasn't dealt with these things before and also um, try and break down the stigma that surrounds this. Um, just so you know, I am severely fucking nervous right now. When I am nervous, I swear a lot. I'm really, really sorry. Um, <laughs> but I am shitting my pants up here, so <laughs> I am going to start. Um, so before I give a talk, I'd like to sort of tell you a little bit about me so you know who's talking to you. Um, I'm a software engineer at Domain um, in Sydney, Australia. Um, and throughout my career, I've always been a creative developer there. Um, I love solving problems in creative ways, using code to bring joy and happiness into things. So I do that by night now. Um, but also, I'm not just a developer. Um, I'm also a human being. And I'm shy and quiet, but I'm also outgoing, outgoing and entertaining when I'm comfortable or I've had a few drinks. So after this, I will be quite fucking happy. Um, but yeah, so let's get into it. Um, so what is mental health? Oh, that's really awkward. Um, <laughs> so what is mental health? Um, it's generally considered anything to do with somebody's psychological or emotional well-being. Um, and in saying that, there are always these two sort of types that come associated with it. Um, one is depression, um, one of my favorite things to sit in. Um, it's a great dark little place, so much fun. Please sense my sarcasm as well. Um, and anxiety. This one really does get me so fucking excited. I have had this all fucking day, all fucking week, leading up to this conference. It's made me really rethink my decisions about putting my proposal in for this talk. <laughs> but um, in saying that, yes, it's, it's a fun time. Um, but there's also a million other things that you can be diagnosed with or... Um, whatever you've been diagnosed with, to do with mental health. Um, some of the ones as well, I know that I'm still being diagnosed with. Um, I see my doctors as well, um, figuring out if I have PTSD or association disorder. But there are a ton of other things that you can have. It is not all just depression and anxiety. And sometimes depression and anxiety also comes in waves of, it should be very mild and it can also be very severe. But um, let's talk about what this can look like, right? Uh, usually, we sort of think of an image like this, right? Google search, sad person sitting alone, you know, alone. Um, and it's not wrong. That is kind of what it looks like sometimes. Uh, it can also be in body language, the way somebody holds themselves up, the way people are walking, talking. Um, can, yeah, it can definitely be in conversation. I resonate with this one a lot. Um, if I laugh at really inappropriate shit during this talk, I am so sorry, it is just a part of it. Um, but yeah, so sometimes you met some really obscure jokes that people don't laugh at. Um, but also it looks like this. This is also a photo of me. Um, I think I looked quite fucking happy, I was. Um, but this photo was also taken in one of my most lowest depressive states. Um, and I will talk more about that later. But the reason why I show you that is because we're all unique as individuals and it will never look the same in everyone. Um, mental health doesn't affect everybody the same. Um, you'll have different ways of dealing with it, um, doing stuff. I forgot my point about what I was talking about, but I think I hit it. Um, but yeah, now I want to talk about sort of the symptoms that you can get when you have this. And the reason why I want to talk about this is to sort of help educate for anybody that have, hasn't seen it firsthand um, and also create a bit of empathy, not sympathy, just empathy, okay? Um, so there are a wide range of symptoms that you can get. And because we're all unique, they are not the same either. Um, so I'm mainly going to be talking about what I've personally felt. Um, so one of them is this, um, that I can have my depression, depressive states, and then bam, I'll have anxiety at the same time. This is, this is some of the funnest time I've ever had in life, those ones. Um, it can also look like this awkward face. Um, I have social anxiety as well. That really makes me shit myself. If anybody saw me at the meetup last night, that was life goal. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, there are also physical side effects that can come with it as a result or, I don't know, just there. But um, one of my favorites is one of the oldest ones that I've had since the very first time I got diagnosed is this is me at 4 a.m. with insomnia. Um, the shit I do at 4 a.m. is just great. Life decisions get made here. Um, 
But you can think about these symptoms as well, about how this affects our day-to-day -day life. Imagine going to work, um, going into your meetings, and trying to function as a normal human being that slept, like, a total eight hours. Um, it, it sort of builds up, so it's not that fun. Alongside the insomnia comes um, massive headaches and migraines. Um, absolute confusion is a great one. Um, Medicine, let's touch on this quickly, because this one comes with some great fucking side effects. Um, sometimes when you do get diagnosed with a mental illness, you can get treatment with medicine. And um, that's totally fine if you do or you don't. It's your preference, really. Um, but in my case, I've tried a few different med medicines. I don't particularly like some of them, but I'm still sorting it out. Um, but yeah, the, I really wish that I could have taken a picture of the, you know, the pamphlet that comes in, like, medicine when you buy it, right? So in this size four or six font, whatever you want to call it, is like a whole page of the side effects that you may or may not get, and then the ones that are severe. It's, it's, it's a really great read. I recommend it. Um, but some of them, like, I've had so many different ones. I've had constipation, diarrhea, nausea, headaches, hallucinations, you name it. It's been a fun time. But I think the one that makes me laugh, and I'm not sure if this is just because I'm a sarcastic human being, but is one of the big ones that they warn you about in the first three to four weeks of taking some of these antidepressants is the higher risk you are of committing suicide when you are already suicidal. That made me laugh. I mean, nobody's really laughing now because this topic's really awkward, but, you know, there we go. Um, yeah, so na nausea. I walk around all the time, feel like I'm going to vomit, you know, but it's very hard to see. Um, confusion. This is also another one. Um, I have the worst memory in the world right now. I don't know if you can notice with me looking at my slides, being like, what the fuck comes next? But um, I can't remember things. Um, I have uh, gotten to the point where I forget things. I can't concentrate. I think I'm repeating myself. Um, but I have neurologists and MRIs that I go to to try and diagnose these things better. Um, but yeah, those are some of the things that, obviously, if you really think about them, they will, will affect your day-to-day -day life, especially as programmers trying to solve bugs and go to meetings and talk to people. Um, so where can we get help? Uh, first off, with professionals. I recommend going and seeing your general doctor. I'm not sure what you call it in Europe, um, but yeah, just your family doctor. And they can help you set up a mental health plan. Um, and they can sort of coach you and guide you into maybe referring you to see a psychologist um, that usually provides you with some, um, some good therapy, which is usually taught back. Um, I found it very helpful. Um, also, they can send you to psychiatrists who can help diagnose you further um, with more pinpointed um, mental, mental illnesses. Um, but yeah, in saying that as well, um, if you don't gel well with one and you finally go and have the courage to see one and this professional is not great and it doesn't fit with you, don't feel like you have to stay with them. Shop around. You're unique. You're not going to gel with the first person that you get. I can happily say that in the last year I have had seen about six to seven different psychologists, doctors, you name it, just to find the right one. So, oh, also, you can also get help from the people around you. Um, it's also easier to talk to people that you feel sort of safe with already, so family and friends. Um, but yeah, I can't stress enough though how important it is to get help. There is no shame in doing that. Um, again, I'll just start talking about stigma. Like, what if we could help remove this, right? Just even if we're not suffering from it, we'd want to do it, right? Um, so what happens when these things come knocking at your door? Your friend tells you something personal and is telling you they're having a really down time or something like that. Um, I've noticed this day and age, and I'm going to tell you a story in a little bit, is especially with you know, social media or, you know, our modes of communication like Slack, um, I've noticed, you know, we like to react to things with emoticons, right? Compassion. Um, now, please, I know I put a lot of tests on the screen. I couldn't be bothered to crop it out, but um, let me give you a bad story. I co-organize um, and run a little collective um, in Sydney called Dev Dev Women, and it's just a bunch of female engineers where we have a safe place to talk about things, share stuff, whatever. But for World Mental Health Day, I decided to use my story and just share it with some people that I felt safe and comfortable with. Um, and this is what I wrote. And I'll just read you a short passage to sum it up. Um, so, yeah, this part. I can have many breakdowns these days, which can look as simple as an anxious person smiling awkwardly at a meetup, to full-fledged crying fits, or even zoning out to the point I'm not there anymore. 
In some of these states, I've had to call to be picked up or be consoled on the phone for 45 minutes because I'm a danger to myself. Having people see me struggle makes me feel in immense shame and embarrassment in the moment and the following days after. So that's generally the point of this message, right? And when I shared this story, it was great. At the time, we only had about 30, 35 women in this group, um, and 21 of them that saw it um, showed their compassion and made me feel you know, accepted, and this was an okay message to share by reacting with a little love heart, and it was great. I felt a bit of compassion. But I started thinking about it more and more, right? Is this really the way that we're used to responding to these sorts of messages? And then it got me thinking about human connection. To me, that emoticon now doesn't really create a human connection with me. But a week later, I got this message from a woman who had just caught up with the whole channel. And she sent me this. And I got one message out of the 21, and it made me really realize how, how much of an impact spending five minutes writing a message about how you actually feel can actually mean something so much to somebody expressing things. Um, so you don't actually have to read this, it's just a picture. But, um, but yeah, so how can we help? Um, start with a negative, maybe don't say shit like this. Um, this is probably the most annoying thing you'll ever fucking hear if you say you're feeling down. Cheer up, oh fuck yeah, <laughs> right? Um, there are, yeah, multiple things not to say to people, like cheering up, just don't think about it, sweep it under the rug, do not, if you're suffering from that and somebody told you to do it, don't do it. Um, but yeah, like, if you're not suffering this, like, help us remove the stigma. Um, because if we do this, it'll be sort of a little bit more comforting to, even me, I still struggle to do this at work, to say that I need to take a mental health day. I will do it on the side, tell my manager in private, and then in the channel say I'm taking a sick day, because I still feel embarrassed to say mental health. So how we can help is by sharing your feelings and your stories. The more we, we realize that we're all the same and we all feel sad and angry at different points in our life, it, it makes it easier. Um, also learn how to ask, are you okay? It sounds so simple, like these three little words can actually sort of save somebody's life sometimes. Um, but I'm gonna share some resources which will teach you how to actually have this conversation with ease and sort of prepare yourself for it. Um, and be comfortable with uncomfortable. Um, sometimes, I gave this talk at work a few days ago and it was a lot smaller of a crowd, but holy shit, were people uncomfortable. Um, and sort of with that, the woman that sent me that personal message, that's sort of where I'm getting at. It can be uncomfortable sometimes to face these things and even talk to somebody about it, even though you're not suffering, and that's perfectly fine. Like, we all have to grow and learn these things. Um, I've literally forgot my actual fucking point, but do that, whatever's on the slide. Um, but yes, we'll touch on a few things now about the workplace and how we can help with that. Um, this is something that my company has really been pushing on me and teaching me, um, and it's been really great, understanding that Taking care of ourselves and other people are way more important than a, a JIRA ticket. Like, I know we all want to release a new feature or, I don't know, go live with something, but I can tell you that it is much more important to take care of the people around you because it will only benefit you in the, like the long run to get better work out of people. Um, lead by example, especially if you are a manager of some sort. Uh, promote downtime, maybe show your employees that it is good to leave on time, right? Leave at 5.30, don't stay back till 10.30 and think that that's the appropriate way to work. Um, other things is try to have open conversations, ask people how they are, not just how their work is going. Um, but another one is also that, I just wanna tell you a story about, um, I have a good friend and colleague that sits next to me, his name is Steven, um, and we are absolute equals. We're just developers, we write JavaScript, that's it. He has absolutely no leadership or manage management roles, but he has personally taught me so much about how to handle these things. And that's, I think, the best thing is that even though I'm on this stage suffering from it talking to you, I learn by the way people interact with me as well. And what he's shown me is that whenever I don't come into work or he knows that I'm feeling down or sick, he reiterates to me how important it is that I take care of myself. So never feel like you can't do anything because you're not in a position of power. Um, 
And also prepare yourself to ask, are you okay? Like one tip is don't ask the person if you're in a group of people because you are definitely going to get a fucking lie, like, yeah, I'm doing sweet. Um, maybe instead ask them to go for coffee or go for a walk around the block and you might get an honest answer. Um, and check in with them afterwards. Um, they might be fine one day, but they might not be fine the next. It's always good to just keep track of what's going on. Um, so, yeah, again, this one I'm only going to touch on really quickly, just because I have prepared a larger sort of resource deck for you to go through. Um, sort of gives you tips and tricks about little life hats that you can try. I love life hats. Um, I've tried everything from fucking yoga to meditation to, God, eating salads and shit, I don't know. You know, there's, there's a whole list of shit you can do, but... Um, the one thing that I can really say that helps is communicate with people. If you've already told people how, like, what you're suffering from and that you're having a hard time, communicate with them in the best way that you can. That will help you and will also help them. I do this with work all the time. If I say, hey, I think I'm starting to slip, I might need to work from home for a day or two and just reset myself. But I'm still getting the work done, but without the social anxiety of having people around. But another big point is... I will say this probably another five times during my talk, is reach out for help. Like, there is nothing, I mean, there is, like, to, to make you feel embarrassed, but there really is nothing embarrassing about asking for help. Like, it is a really brave thing to do. Um, so now I'm just going to give you um, a warning. Um, I will talk about some sensitive content that does revolve around suicide and death. Um, so if you are uncomfortable with that, you are more than welcome to leave. I will not be offended. Um, but yes, so I want to bring you back to this picture. I told you this was taken at one of my very, very down states. Um, and, yeah, I just went on a big road trip. I told work, you know, I'm starting to burn out. I'm going to take my two weeks of annual leave. I'm going to put an impromptu trip to Western Australia. Went camping by myself. I like to be away from as many people as I can. So I went to the rural desert and just fucking camped. And it was great. I had so much fun. I was happy, right, on the surface. But this was towards the end of the trip. And... Within a week of taking this photo, I was uh, admitted to hospital for a suicide attempt. Um, <laughs> that was a fun time. <laughs> it really was. And I had about eight police and paramedics burst into my bedroom door. Shit was fun. Um, but yeah, so in saying that, when I look at my life and I look at society's view of what success means, right? I, on the surface, like, I've, I've traveled the world, I've lived in different countries, I've seen some really beautiful things, climbed some epic mountains, and I have fun doing it, right? I've had an amazing career, I've traveled the world and done all these great, fun things that I love. I have an amazing set of friends and family that are super supportive and love me to bits and pieces. I now have this fucking adorable dog, which I love, and I also have an amazing partner, right? This is kind of a recipe for success, right? Shit looks good. Not really. I mean, this photo still got taken, and I still got taken to the hospital. So sometimes when we view people, there's other things going on in the background. So don't always assume somebody's fine just because they're fucking giving you the thumbs up and saying everything's all right. But in saying that, um, mental health is not a sign of weakness. I know sometimes in my dark states, and even standing on this stage, I'm embarrassed and feeling a bit of shame, right? But it is not a sign of weakness. I'm a strong person. I get through things and I deal with lots of stuff. Asking for help, help as well is not a sign of weakness. Right. And again, if I didn't ask for help, I probably would not be here today. So I cannot stress how important it is to ask for help. Um, also, I want you to know that your feelings are valid. No matter how big or small a problem is, whether it's because you lost your phone or because you've lost a loved one, okay? I know they're not the same, but if you are feeling sadness because of either, you are still feeling sadness. Your feelings are valid. Don't compare your sadness to somebody else's. Um, and I really want to talk about the side effects of not talking about these things and not learning about emotional health. Uh, sorry, this part. Um, yeah, so... My cousin Jessie, uh, when I was 21, she took her own life. Uh, that was shitty, but I'm going to laugh and be really sarcastic right now, just so you know. Um, but yeah, she, she did. She took her own life. And we were three months apart in age. We grew up together. We were in the same classes. We were very close. Um, but yes, there was no note left. We, we didn't know much. But um, the hard fact is we did know she was actually depressed. Bring on the guilt. 
um, but none of us were really educated enough to know what to do about this. Um, and these, these are the side effects of what happens if you don't talk about it. I'm going to skip this now. <laughs> but yes, um, that's why I think it's really important to learn about emotional health. Because I, I really wish that this was taught at an earlier stage in life. I really wish this was taught in primary school. Because when we're that young, we're taught that if we scrape our knee, you should put a Band-Aid on it. But we are not taught what to do if we feel sad or angry. They're seen as these negative they're seen as these negative emotions. I don't think they are. Emotions just teach us things, right? They teach us how we respond to stuff that we think. Oh my god, there's a clock there. Um, right, but yeah, in saying that, if we don't acknowledge being sad, right, we don't want to be sad, then how can you be fine with being happy? Like, they are literally just emotions. Um, and this, again, don't take everything I say as fat. I, f I think I actually forgot to mention this earlier. But <laughs> I'm up here talking to you about my personal experiences. I am not a doctor. I'm not a fucking trained professional. Do not take everything I say, like, as fucking truth. It's not. It's just life experiences that I've had. Um, but, yeah, this is just my personal belief, is that I don't think there is anything... Um, I don't think there is such thing as a negative emotion. Um, I know there are some that we don't like as much as the other ones. But our emotions are there to guide us in making decisions. Um, when I'm happy, like, it teaches me that, oh, that's something that, like, I have my partner, right? I want to be with her because she makes me happy, right? She gives me a fun time, it's great, right? I make a decision for that. But when I'm sad, right, I don't want to feel that, why? It's stupid. When Jessie died, I was sad, was one of the things. But I didn't really deal with it, I tried to push it away. But sadness just, was just telling me that I loved her. That's all it is. Uh, I like, encourage you to just acknowledge your emotions. This is something that I practice a lot, especially when I'm having really down days, is when I can acknowledge an emotion and start to figure out, well, okay, why am I angry at this person for X, Y, and Z? Oh, okay. Maybe I can actually explain that to them, or maybe this is the, re the real reason why I'm upset. So I can talk more about this later. I think I'm running out of time. But um, yeah, now I just want to talk about a little life hack um, and sort of the idea of turning these so-called negative emotions or these feelings that we don't really want and sort of pushing that into something a little bit more fun. So um, this is my little life hack. I started with a problem. One, I'm fucking severely depressed and I have severe anxiety. But that leads to the fact that I struggle to get out of bed. Jesus Christ, that should be an easy fucking thing, right? And it's not, I'm, I have like, I'm slept sometimes, I can get out of bed, but I physically can't. Because um, I'm just too upset. So. How the hell could I fix this? Well, I thought every morning I wake up with my alarm, right? What if I could pair that with something that makes me immediately feel joy? Something quick and easy. And I came up with bubbles, because fuck yeah, who doesn't get happy when they see bubbles, right? Even that little five-year-old in the playground, you want to snatch that little magic wand out of their hand and blow your own bubbles. <laughs> cool? So this was my goal. I wanted this thing to fire when my alarm went off. So luckily, I'm a motherfucking developer. Um, so I worked at the little Arduino, got me a board. This was probably one of my first actual hardware projects as well. But there was some good motivation behind it. I got one of these servos that like twist shit. I got a piece of rope. Yeah, it gets professional, right? And I got some fucking gaffer tape. This shit was, this was the key ingredient to making this. Um, and then I used Johnny Five to write the code to interface with the hardware. And I'm also not going to show you the code because it's really irrelevant right now. And bada bing, bada boom. That's what I had. I had my little alarm clock. I mean, it looks like an LHS hazard. It really was. Some bubbles went into my eye, but I still <laughs> laughed and I had a great fucking time. Um, it looks really professional. I know you can see the gaffer tape and the string and like, what the fuck is going on there? But it worked. That's the point. Um, and it did. It helped me get out of bed sometimes. Because instead of that immediate feeling of like just self doubt and just, I don't know, just pure depression, I was laughing in the morning and I got out of bed and it really helped. Um, I was going to bring it today and like, demonstrate it, but I'm going to be honest, it broke a few months ago, and I have been too fucking lazy to touch that again. Um, but yeah. So with that, I took to social media as I do, and I thought maybe I could use this again to break the stigma, to turn these sort of negatively viewed emotions and feelings into something that can bring a little joy, and you can get through it. Like, even though we're suffering, like, we can still, like, I find it hard to do side projects now, 
but when this one came up, I had a little bit more passion and motivation, so I thought that was fun. But yeah, forced in happiness doesn't work as well. I mean, as much as I've tried to do what other people have said, oh, don't worry about it. Think about it later, you know? It'll all get better in time. You just can't sweep that shit away. Like, don't do it. Um, mental health is hard. It really is fucking hard. But it does get easier, and it is easier when you do have supportive people around you. Um, and I can't really do this talk without saying thank you. Um, my big thank you is because one thing that I did um, was I created a little mental health network, if you please. So these people all help me out, and they're all different in special different ways. Um, and I will reach out to them, even in my happiest points, when I'm just like, oh, I'm feeling a, bit, a little bit anxious, it's okay, to when I'm like in the moment of self-harm, right? And they can coach me out of it. But each one of them talks to me differently as well, which I like about the variety, because there are different moments when you are sad that you might want to talk to friend A, because friend A really breaks it down, talks about the problem and that sort of thing. Then friend B sort of talks to you about it, but then tries to make you laugh and happy, and then that's sometimes what you need. And then sometimes one friend just takes you to the pub, and that's what you fucking need, you know? <laughs> but I mean, whatever. You all got different things. But I really did want to say a big thanks to these five special people, because I would not be here without them. Yeah, and I'm summing up these like the last two slides, but um, I just want to reiterate that our strongest tools are ourselves, which means that we don't need anything special, really. Like, you have your voice, you have your thoughts, and you can take action on them. If you see somebody feeling down, um, you can approach them and ask them, are you okay? If you're feeling down as well, please don't feel alone. You can reach out for help in many different places, um, and Jay and Anna will share some resources after this. Um, but yeah, we all have what it takes to change someone's life for the better. And it really can be as simple as three little words, like, are you okay? Um, but yeah, this is the final slide. I will leave you with, it is 100% okay to not be okay. Like, don't fucking lie to yourselves. We all know you have bad days. So, um, thank you so much. That is me. Those are my social media handles or whatever. Um, I'm sometimes socially awkward, and I hide and have cigarettes all the time. But if you have any questions, or you want to chat to me later, I am literally an open book about this stuff. I'm happy to listen, uh, do whatever. So feel free to find me. Um, and thank you to JS Heroes for letting me come up here and ramble for 30 minutes.